Hi, this is Ozzy Osbourne. Tonight, Metal Shop presents a special tribute to the music and the memory of Randy Rhodes. Metal Shop. The only show with teeth. Tonight, Metal Shop remembers Randy Rhodes. On the night of March 20th, 1982, this brilliant young guitarist lost his life in a freak airplane accident. But if anything, his effect on heavy metal music is being felt even more now than it was at the time he died. It's amazing to think that the entire recorded works of Randy Rhodes is limited to just four albums and a handful of hard-to-find live tracks. On this special edition of Metal Shop, we'll hear the best of Randy Rhodes' work, and we'll talk to Ozzy Osbourne, Quiet Riot's Kevin DeBro, Motley Crue's Vince Neil and Nikki Six, Paul Stanley of Kiss, Wasted's Pete Way, George Lynch of Dokken, Y&T's Dave Minichetti and Bob Daisley, the bassist who played with Randy in the Ozzy Osbourne band and co-wrote many songs with Ozzy and Randy Rhodes. This is the guitar work of the late Randy Rhodes. Randy Rhodes was born on December 6, 1956, and lived in the same house in Burbank all his life. He was raised by his mother, Dolores, a multi-instrumental musician and music teacher who ran a school and a shop in North Hollywood, where Randy would eventually teach. Ozzy Osbourne told Metal Shop a little about Randy's mom. Oh, his mother, his, love, his mother was his best friend. He, he's the only person he could ever confine in anything was his mother. Not saying he was a mommy's boy, that was his best friend. His mother was a, a friend more than a mother to him, and, and I, I remember saying to his mother, we're going to be a very successful man, you know, he says, she says, yeah, and she was ever so happy to see her, her, her son doing it, which any parent would be, you know, and then, like, as if, like, the tables had suddenly turned when I, when he, I, I, I just don't know how she stood up for it, you know. I mean, it must be terrible for somebody to say, I'm sorry to tell you your son's been killed in a tragic accident. I mean, it must blow you away. You can't imagine how Mrs. Rose must have felt, dear old dude. She was, she was just, I mean, at the funeral, she actually held her head up. As, as, I mean, you could see in the woman's face, she was tearing her heart out, you know. In 1975, Randy Rhodes and Kevin Dubrow formed Quiet Riot. The group was popular in Los Angeles, but was never really able to secure a recording contract which might have broken them nationally. However, Randy Rhodes did record two albums with Quiet Riot. Both Quiet Riot's first album and Quiet Riot 2 were sold to a Japanese record company who put them out only in Japan. Now, although these records were available in the U.S. as imports for a time, they've since been restricted and are now much sought after collector's items. Quiet Riot's Kevin DeBro tells why. The way I feel about those two albums is after a long night of drinking, when you get home, where you feel after you've been drinking, People keep purchasing them on import for large amounts of money and keep having me sign them, and they seem to think they're great because Randy Rhodes is on them. Now, if you could loop all the guitar solos together, they'd be fine, <laughs> but the rest of them is garbage. And Randy was always a great player, so he managed to shine through all the rest of the garbage. During the period in the late 70s that Randy was in Quiet Riot, he was part of an L.A. heavy metal scene that's only recently gained national recognition with the success of such bands as Quiet Riot, Motley Crue, and Dokken. Vince Neil and Nikki Six of Motley Crue were on the L.A. metal scene at the same time as Randy, and they told Metal Shop about that scene and about some fun Vince and Randy had one evening on Sunset Strip. We were all in Los Angeles bands, and, and so everybody kind of knows each other, you know? Yeah. So you just go into a bar, and there, you know, there's other bands, so you just sit down and drink with them. That's how L.A. is, you know, everybody yeah. gets together and drinks and has good times together. Everybody hangs out together. Yeah. One time I remember we got drunk together in the Rainbow, and it was, the, rain, the Rainbow had closed, and we walked outside, and there's this big tree right outside of the Rainbow on Sunset Boulevard, and um, we were kind of drunk, so we climbed it. And that's, that was a lot of fun, we were climbing trees at yeah. Sunset Boulevard at 3 in the morning. <laughs> Seeing his career bogging down with Quiet Riot, in 1980, after five years with Quiet Riot, he decided to audition for the new band being formed by Ozzy Osbourne, who had just left Black Sabbath. Oddly enough, Randy admitted that he had never been a fan of Black Sabbath. George Lynch, who's now Dawkins lead guitarist and was once a teacher at Dolores Road School, also auditioned for Ozzy. I was supposed to be the guitar player in Ozzy Osbourne originally. It was me, Randy, and Gary Moore, a couple other guys. and. Randy got the job, and, and I've been up for it a couple times since then. He realized after he got an Aussie that, in fact, this is a quote, and this is funny now the way it comes out. He said, I realize now Quiet Riot would have never made it. And that's funny because after his demise, they went on, now they're 
I mean, as we're speaking, they're number one on Billboard. I don't know if they would have with him. I mean, you listen to the old CBS Sony records and you think, oh my God, you know. But once he got an Aussie, things just opened up for him. You know? It's amazing to see how when people get in the spotlight and get up there, how fast they change and how much they progress. Ozzy Osbourne remembers his first meeting with Randy Rhodes. I first met Randy Rhodes in Los Angeles in approximately um, 1980. And um, funny thing happened, actually, the first time I met him, I got very drunk one night and he came down to do an audition at the unearthly hour at four, four o'clock in the morning and I was, like, crashed out on a couch. And I saw this little skinny guy walk in the studio with blonde hair and a little tiny little amp and he started playing. And as soon as I heard him, he just brought, brought me around again. And just, I couldn't believe how great the guy was playing. You know? so I couldn't believe my luck when I met him. And uh, we'd lived together for about a year, writing and sort of Bob Daisley and myself and Randy Rose lived in a house in Wales. And then we got the first album together, Blizzard of Oz. Ozzy Osbourne believes that Randy's fresh approach to metal guitar playing was a key element in the resurgence of heavy metal in America during the 80s. We started the resurge of this heavy metal music again in America, you know. We proved that our form of music wasn't dead, you know. We, I mean, quite right had Randy Rhodes, but they didn't have any successful records with him. I mean, until Randy and I got together, we, we proved a lot of things, you know. There's been precious little of Randy's live guitar work released to date, but Quiet Riot's Kevin DeBro considers Randy's work on the live version of I Don't Know, recorded on the Blizzard of Oz tour and released as the B-side of Flying High Again, to be the best live metal record ever. I never was very fond of anything that, um, that Ozzy did, but this live version of I Don't Know, is, Randy is so incredible on it. It's probably the classic heavy life, heavy metal track. When you talk with anyone who knew Randy Rhodes, one word keeps coming up over and over again. Dedication. Pete Way, who toured with Randy as Ozzy's bassist and now leads Wasted, remembers this first and foremost. But Randy used to go to guitar teachers and things like that and just to to go along and have lessons. Not that he needed lessons at all, but he used to go along to play with people and just to see if there was anything that he could discover from somebody else he's playing you know things like just the, the dedication i mean he wasn't from my experience of him somebody that was in the bar till sort of four o'clock in the morning and out of his brains um would have been interesting to see the sort of thing that randy would be playing now you know so many people that have been influenced by randy are coming up what you know so catching up some of the tricks and things that he knew uh, from the guitar i mean Anybody that young and so dedicated would be doing some incredible things now. Bob Daisley, who also played bass with Randy, feels that Randy was one of the most dedicated musicians he ever met. He was a totally dedicated musician, and not just to rock. He was trying to further himself all the time. He never ever gave up on, well, I've reached this standard, so that'll do for a while. He just kept on going and going and going, you know. Listened to other people all the time, got ideas, and he had his influences. Um, a couple of people that I worked with, he, he mentioned that were part of his influences was Richie Blackmore and also um, Luther Grosvenor or alias a Ariel Bender. But he listened to all sorts of people and, and made his own interpretation of, of his influences. And like I said, he just sort of wanted to grow and grow and grow all the time. We asked Bob Daisley and Ozzy Osbourne which of Randy's guitar solos they felt were the standouts. Here's what they said. I love the solo in Flying High again. I think that's absolutely brilliant. Crazy Train, I thought, was it was an all-time classic riff. Just, just the, the riff in Crazy Train was, was brilliant. Here's what Ozzy had to say. Flying High Again was a fabulous solo. Um, S.A.T.O. was an incredible guitar solo. And his guitar solo on Diary of a Madman, at the end of that middle eight section, is, is, is like something like you... It's like something... But the same buzz you'd get off an old Zeppelin album, you get off that kind of a solo. Sort of a ghoster, you know? How great could Randy Rhodes have been? We'll never really know. On March 20th, 1982, near Leesburg, Florida, Randy Rhodes went up in a small Beechcraft Bonanza airplane along with Andrew Aycock, Ozzy's bus driver, who was a certified pilot, and Rachel Youngblood, the group's hairdresser and makeup artist. The plane crashed into a mansion right near where the group had parked its bus to get some sleep. Although some media reports claimed that the plane was buzzing the bus, 
Ozzy Osbourne refuses to believe that the pilot was flying recklessly. And a lot of people think that he was practical joke, it was what went wrong. And it wasn't, it was just a, the, the driver of the bus took them up in a plane. I mean, there's no practical joke. They just went up for a ride in the plane to, to take an aerial shot of the bus. And the guy made a terrible error, you know, and crashed the bus. The fact remains that a, a great, great person got killed. Two great people, in fact, are, are, are very close to me. Rachel R R Youngblood was also in the place. She was a 58-year-old woman, and it goes to show that, that, that he, they weren't pr screwing around because she had a heart condition. She, she went into sort of doing anything daring, you know, and, and he hated flying. We were all in a terrible state of... We just couldn't believe it, you know. It was just like, what? You know, this is... It's like a, it was like a, like some at the Twilight Zone, you know. It was like a, like a Hitchcock flick, you know. It was like nuts. Ozzy also told Metal Shop that he's dedicated himself to preserving Randy's memory. I promised his mother at the funeral that I'd never let the legend of Randy die. I'm doing my utmost to keep it going. You know, even today, you know, I, I still can't believe that he's not going to be able. I keep expecting to bounce, come bouncing to the door like, very often, you know. He wasn't into bread. He wasn't. A, he wasn't a, a ego freak. He wasn't a bad person. He was a very nice, gentle guy. He was, he was a gentleman. One day, people will look upon Randy Rose as being like Jimi Hendrix. If I have anything to do with it, uh, uh, because I think Randy Rose was a, it was an incredible musician. I mean, I'll never let the guy as a talent rest because he was a fabulous talent. He was a lovely guy. What was so unique about Randy Rhodes? Why is he held in such reverence? We asked a number of musicians what they thought. Here's Paul Stanley of KISS. I really liked Randy Rhodes' playing a lot because I thought that it took what had been done and, and took it into a slightly new direction. I thought that for all his flash and for all his ability, it, it still made a lot of sense. And I think a lot of lead players nowadays are too hung up on pulling on the wang bar and getting harmonics and not really understanding why they're doing it or playing really fast licks with really no purpose or reason. I thought Randy made a lot of sense with his playing. I always found it exciting, and I, I, I would tend to listen to it over and over. Dave Minichetti of y and I have to hand it to Randy Rhodes for his guitarmanship, I think, that really sparked all those kids' interest in Ozzy all over again. It was like, you know, okay, this is Ozzy, yeah, Black Sabbath, we know all of that, but wow, listen to this cat, man. I mean, he is putting down some unbelievable riffs, a different kind of deal. His tone was amazing, and he wrote some good tunes. I mean, you know, he, he wrote a lot of those tunes. He was like the principal guy. Bob Daisley. For a start, his technique was so uh, precise. He'd sit in the studio, and, and he'd come out with a brilliant solo that was like, bosh, just flow out. And he'd say, um, right, I'll double it. And he'd play the same solo over the top. And, and not miss a note. Now, I'd never seen anybody do things like that before. And and he, he would do a solo that we thought was, oh, yeah, that's great, man. He'd say, no, 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 it's not good enough. I want to do another one. He was never satisfied with, with really what he did. He always thought he could do it better, which is a great thing. Ozzy Osbourne. He could play gentle, as gentle as a, a fly on water, a fairy, you know. And then from that, he'd turn into the beast. And he was only a little guy. I mean, you think, if you heard him play, you think, this guy's got to be looking like a monster. I mean, he had the, he had the, it could turn it from loveliness to sort of like thunder and lightning, you know. The thing about it is with him, whatever he did, always fit. One of the interesting developments since the death of Randy Rhodes has been the gigantic success of his former group, Quiet Riot. They reunited after Randy's death. Kevin Dubrow remembers Randy. Very humble person uh, who was a very devoted uh, guitar player and very, very funny person who could make me laugh at any time he wanted to and usually did, especially when I had a drink in my hand and I would spit all over everybody. I met him when I was 18, he was 17, and we played together in Quiet Riot for five years and we kept in close contact as is possible when he was on the road with Ozzy. When he came off break, we'd always get together and get out there and go totally wild. On Metal Health, Quiet Riot decided to remake one of the songs initially recorded by Randy Rhodes on Quiet Riot 2. Kevin explains how it happened. Slick Black Cadillac is a song that was on the Quiet Right 2 album with Randy Rhodes on it, and we redid it because our drummer Frankie Benelli really liked the song. Basically, the lead guitar playing, people always say, how, does Randy, how did Randy play it as opposed to how Carlos plays it? And basically, Carlos plays the same parts because he liked what Randy did so much, he felt that he would stick to the original. Metal Shop. Quiet Riot's Metal Health album contains a song that is Kevin DeBro's tribute to Randy Rhodes. Strangely enough, it was written for Randy before he died. 
Here's Kevin DeBro to introduce Quiet Riot's tribute to Randy, Thunderbird. Thunderbird uh, was a song that was written about Randy Rhodes, and it was written before he died, not after, which a lot of people seem to think. And uh, the lyrics in that song about Randy speak for themselves, I pretty much think. That's Metal Shop's tribute to the music and memory of Randy Rhodes. We hope you've enjoyed it.